Hey guys, good morning. I am going to uh, share with you guys something that has been on my heart. So I want to add some value to you today. Um, <clears throat> excuse my voice a little bit. Um, I'm going to share with you, I put the title of my description. Have you ever asked yourself, what is your purpose in life? So many thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people at some point in their life have asked that question. What is my purpose? And how do I find my purpose? Like all the things. So I wanted to add some value to you today. Um, 10 steps to finding your passion and your purpose. Um, 10 steps. Super simple, super easy. Anybody can do this. Um, so if you are catching this live, go ahead and type live in the comments below. Say hello. And if you're catching this on the replay, type replay. So then I can go back and show you some love. But I highly encourage you. I know a lot of you are going to watch this on the replay. And that's totally fine. It's Friday. A lot of people are at work. But I encourage you to get out a notebook. Just like so. And I've got my notes written down here. Um, as well, um, what I'm going to share with you today. But I encourage you to get a notepad and write these 10 steps down. You may have to watch this video a couple of times so that you can make sure that you get all these 10 steps. But again, they're super simple, super easy. Um, but I wanted to share that with you because I get asked that question a lot. Um, and it is a discovery. It's, it's a destination. It's not, uh, I mean, I say it's a destination. It's a journey. And a journey begins with a single step. So I'm going to give you 10 steps today. Hey, Melissa, I'm going to give you 10 steps today on how to find your passion and your purpose. Okay. So while I'm doing that, I'm actually going to um, be putting on my skincare regimen this morning. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of both. But number one, number one, the first step that you need uh, to do and finding your passion is just is determine your mission statement. Determine your mission statement. Um, like any business, we need to know what our mission in life is, right? Every every company has a mission statement. Um, we need to know what our mission in life is. So, what impact do you want to make on the world or those around you? Okay, what is, what is your legacy? What do you want to pass along your kids and your grandkids, so on and so forth? What is your legacy? What do you want to be known and remembered for? Um, we all have values and things that are important to us, right? So what you need to do is you need to start taking note of what means the most to you. And just start there. Um, find your mission statement. Sometimes it's good to just journal it or just take some notes um, about what you want your legacy to be. Um, and then just start there. So create create a mission statement for yourself. For me, it wasn't an overnight thing. Um, but my mission in life, especially these last 10 years, is... My whole goal was to break a generational curse in my family, which I do have divorce in my family, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I, I actually have been married twice before. Um, and I, I hate that about myself, but that's just, that's just my story. It is what it is. Can't go back. But my husband that I'm married to now, we've been together almost nine years. It's the longest relationship that I've ever had because I wanted to break that generational curse of divorce in my family. That's my mission in life is to, no matter how hard it gets, no matter what we go through in our marriage, like I'm devoted, I'm committed, no matter what. Um, and so I'm not necessarily saying that that's my entire mission statement necessarily <laughs> is to stay married, but that was part of it, you know. And then to be the best mom I can be for my daughter, to give her the life that she deserves and that she is loved and valued and cherished and so on and so, so on and so forth. So number one, determine your mission statement. Number two, 
disclaimer, my daughter's going to be coming in here. Um, hold on one second. You can't come in here, sweet girl. Mommy's on the phone, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you go watch TV for just a minute until I'm done? Mm-mm. Okay, just stay right there, okay? You can listen, but just stay right there. Because I don't want you to get hurt if you crawled in with me, okay? All right. But everybody say hi to Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Well, you don't say hi to yourself. You can say hi to them. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. The joys of being a stay-at-home mom. Hi. 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 <laughs> All right, I'm going to try my best to continue. Okay, number two. Number two, make a list of the things you love to do. It isn't about choosing one passion, okay? It's about building a life filled with everything that you love, everything that you love. What brings what brings a smile to your face? What brings a smile to your face? Of course, this is an easy answer that Gracie brings smile to my face, but like, what brings you joy? What <laughs> what makes you smile when you get up in the morning? Besides just being a mom or a wife or a friend or a sister, whatever. Hey, you can't climb in here, okay? You'll get hurt. Okay? Okay. Stay right there. You can listen. All right? Um, Mommy? Yes, baby. Mommy? Yeah, Mommy's on the phone. All right. What brings a smile to your face? So for me, it's helping people know their personalities and to teach people how to communicate with others who have different personalities. Like I love teaching people how to communicate effectively, both in relationships, on a job, team building. Like I love team building. Number two is make a list of the things you love to do. I love to teach. That is I have learned over the years that it is my passion. It brings me joy to teach people. Um, so that's something that, so make a list. That's number two. Number three. Number three. Take inventory of your achievements. Take inventory of your achievements. Our accomplishments tell us so much about ourselves and where our skills, talents, values, and integrity, um, and heart resides. So think about all of your accomplishments that you've had in your life. Hey, Gracie, I need for you to step away, okay? You're getting in mommy's way while I'm trying to be on the phone. Can you go watch TV? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> the joys of a toddler. Um, so take inventory of your achievements and your accomplishments. What have you excelled at in your life, both professionally and personally? What are you most proud of? What are you most proud of? Mommy. Yes, baby. Yes. Come on here. Okay, let, let mommy finish being on the phone and then I'll come and then I'll come spend some time with you, okay? Okay. All right. So, like I said, take inventory of your achievements. Um, what are your talents? What are you naturally good at? So for me, so for me, that is, I love to motivate, challenge, and encourage people. That just comes naturally to me, um, is to do those three things. Those are things that I'm really, really good at and that I, I am horrible. I am horrible at being organized. <laughs> so that's not a strong suit of mine. So that's something I need to definitely need to grow in. Number four is acknowledge your gifts and your talents. We are each born with gifts that are important to our purpose in life. We all have gifts. Maybe you're a fantastic listener. Maybe an, a great organizer. Maybe you have the ability to calm people down. Sorry, I had a phone call come in. Maybe you um, are a great organizer and you're naturally good at calming people down. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to make a list of the gifts that are special to you. Okay? What sets you apart from other people? What sets you apart from other people? Um, 
So that's another one. So that's number four. Acknowledge your gifts and your talents. Make a list. Write them down. Number five is start exploring new activities. Um, start exploring new activities. So we can get stuck in the same patterns, same route to work, uh, same coffee shop that we go to every day, same grocery store. When we, when we stay in the same routines, we actually fail to challenge our brains. Okay. So start doing new things and it'll actually spark some creativity in your life. Like read a new book, go to a new restaurant, listen to a new podcast, <laughs> um, change up your morning routine. Step out of your comfort zone, and then you will allow yourself to learn new things about you, okay, that will help you ignite your passions and discover your purpose. So number five is start exploring new activities. Start exploring new activities. Do things that will challenge your brain. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your same routine every single day. If you're coming in live, type live in the comments below. Say hello. Um, I would love to, to wave at you and talk to you. I know it's Friday. I know a lot of people at work. But again, I really want to encourage you guys to go back and watch this video. So that way you know how to find your passions and how to find your purpose. Okay? All right. Number six. Do more of what you love. Do more of what you love. Fill your day with things you love to do. Start when you wake up and end when you go to bed at night. Dilute your life with what you love and you will stop focusing on things that you are tolerating and your passions will be right in front of you. You're also going to find and make more room for new opportunities. So number six is do more of what you love. Um, sometimes it's hard to do that because people don't know what they love yet. And that's okay. Like, for instance, go serve at a food kitchen. I'm just throwing this out there. Go serve at a food. You don't know if you love something until you do it, right? It's no different than us who have never tried a certain vegetable or a certain type of food. You don't know. Like I tell my daughter. I tell my daughter this all the time. You don't know if you like the food if you don't try it, right? You might like it. <laughs> um, shout out to the moms who struggle with getting their kids to eat food because I am definitely in that season. If that's you, drop one in the comments. Um, trying to get your child to try new things is a challenge sometimes. So, like, I get it. I get it. It's hard sometimes to, to step out of your comfort zone and do things um, like that. But that's how you're going to learn to know if, if you love something or not. So, um, so do more of what you love. And if you don't have anything that you love, do things out of the norm. Step out of your comfort zone. Try something. And again, you don't know if you don't love it. You don't know if you, if you love it until you try it. So number seven is begin a uh, journaling practice. It's so good to journal every single day. Um, journal your thoughts, your feelings, excuse me, any kind of dreams that you might have. Dreams are powerful. Um, face your fears so they lose power. When you write things down, it loses power. When you take your thoughts, feelings, and your dreams or your fears and you write them down, it, it loses power. Okay? Uncover what you love about yourself or what you don't love. Start writing for maybe five minutes a day. And then once you do that consistently, bump it up to 30 minutes a day. You're actually going to be amazed at what you discover about yourself and what you want your life to look like. So uh, I love the phrase journal the journey. I look back like, you know, in my journal like 10 years ago when I first got out of rehab and my mindset back then was still so, I had so many things that I still needed to be healed from, healed from, um, from my past. And my mindset was different. I wasn't thinking about, um, that, that my life would be where it's at today. I mean, it was a dream to have my own house, to remarry, to have a, have children. It was a dream of mine. Um, but I just, I didn't think that that was ever going to happen again. And so when I started writing those things down, it took a while. I've grown so much these last 10 years. I love looking back and seeing how my mindset has shifted from insecurity, rejection issues, like all these things from there into today. Um, 
graduated Highlands College, a ministry school, got a house, got a child, um, worked full time in a ministry. Oh my gosh, if you would have told me that my life would be where it's at today, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have believed you. So it's important to journal the journey. Um, it gives you some insight about yourself and it also encourages you to stay focused on those dreams. Um, and then number eight, network with, with like-minded people. Network with like-minded people. Why? Why should we do that? Um, well, when you're trying to find your passion and your purpose, it's good to be around people who are just like you on that same journey, or maybe they're already there. Um, and, like, I went to a John Maxwell. If you know who John Maxwell is, he's absolutely phenomenal. I've read so many of his books. Um but I went to one of his, um, I guess like a conference that he had and he was telling everybody that, um, in or like for him to grow, he, he had all of these dreams, right? But in order to get there, he had to get with some people who were a whole lot more advanced professionally, mentally, emotionally, had a lot more wisdom. Like he would meet with those people and ask them 10 questions, um, and they could be 10 questions professionally or 10 questions personally on how that person achieved those goals, and then he would start applying those things himself, and so it's really good, and then that, I mean, to see where he came from and where he's at today is even amazing, but networking with like-minded people, start engaging with people with similar interests. Meeting new people not only adds more fun in our lives, but you're actually going to start to go deeper into your interest, new opportunities will present themselves, and you'll, once again, learn more about yourself. Like, for instance, if you like to write, join a writing group. If you like to make new friends, join a meetup group or a mom and me group. Um, just network with like-minded people, and you'll start to see and realize what your passion and purpose is. Number nine, we're almost done. Embrace a mindfulness practice. Embrace a mindfulness practice. So, for instance, quiet your mind, okay? Tune out the noise. Tune out the noise. For a lot of people, it's writing. Some like yoga or meditation. Um, go on a nature walk. Do it every single day. Just pause. Y'all, we have so many distractions, like social media, for instance, and here I am on my video. Distractions, social media, television, marketing, um, a busy life, the world has gone mad. People are, like, consistently watching the news all the time, and everybody has a lot of fear of what's going to happen. Like, there's so much distraction in our minds, so it's so important to just pause, even if it's, like, five minutes or ten minutes here and there. But do it every day. Do it every day. I remember I used to be a server at a restaurant at Log so, yeah, Logan's, Logan's restaurant. And I remember getting so stressed out because it was like a two hour wait for customers to, to come eat at this restaurant. And I got so overwhelmed. And so I went into where um, our refrigerator is, like the big, big door, big refrigerator or freezer. And I would go in there and shut the door and just take a deep breath. Like I, <sighs> I just took a deep breath because I was like, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Um, and so, you know, some people are like, well, I don't have time in the day to like pause. Yes, you do. You can go into the bathroom, shut the stall and just take a deep breath. All right. It's so important to do that consistently every single day. Okay. Embrace a mindfulness practice. Do it every day. So when you do, your brain has the chance to sift uh, through everything, like shift your reactive mode into a thoughtful mode. And you're actually going to start to realize what is truly in your heart. Okay. When we live so much in our minds, we lose sight of what is really important to our bigger picture. So make it a priority. Do it every single day. All right. Last but not least, number 10. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. Enjoy life. 
Uh, life should be a majority joy, okay, with just a few tough times. You know, I, I look at some people, um, especially my past students when I worked at Hope Inspired Ministries, like it was everything in their power um, to try to have a better life. And, you know, we would ask some questions like, so tell me, tell me what your home life is like. And, of course, 90%. Of them say it's chaotic and you know their life is chaotic and you just have to wonder you know a is it what's happening to them that is out of their control or is it b what is in their life that they do have control over but they're making a choice right so i think there's a quote i can't remember it verbatim but it said like Something to the effect of, um, like, life, like, not, what happens in our life is 90% our choice and, like, 10% of what happens to us. In other words, we make the decision to choose what our life is like. There's going to be things in our life that is out of our control, but 90% but of the time, it's choices that we make. It's choices that we make. It's, it's choices in relationships. It's choices in our job. It's choices in our friendships. It's choices in our family. We, I mean, everything in our life, 90% of it is based on choice. 10% is what is out of our control. And so that's just really interesting to me. And so as we started navigating with these students, like what is in, in your control and what is out of your control and they start seeing it on paper, paper, then they start realizing like, oh, well, I guess I could get out of that, but I don't know how to. And then we would not help navigate on the how-to part with them. That's why um, we called it coaching. <laughs> we would coach them. I'm not a certified coach, but I am a life coach. <laughs> I've experienced a lot of life. Hey, Alan, good to see you on here. Love you. Miss you guys. Um so have fun. Do do things that you enjoy doing every single day. And then you'll start discovering what your purpose is and what your passions are. Um, I, I, as I close today, um, I'm going to just share something with you guys, just a personal experience. So when I went to rehab, I had absolutely no self-worth whatsoever. I had no self-esteem, no anything other than existing and surviving. I weighed about 80 pounds, soaking wet. I was so skinny, so tired and weary and like all the things, right? So that whole year was lots and lots of counseling <laughs> in this program, which I'm super thankful for. Um, going to church twice a week, every Sunday and Thursday nights during this program, they would have church. So I was getting fed spiritually constantly and consistently. I was going to these classes, learning how to, um, learning how to discover my purpose <laughs> um, and why God created me and like all the things. And so there was a lot of, a lot of things that I, I got to watch and be a part of and experience. And as I was getting ready to transition out of the program, the women's director came up to me and she was like, Farah, we, we would love for you to share your testimony at our Hearts of Hope event. And Hey, Melissa, good to see you on here. Um, at an event, and I was like, what? <laughs> I've never talked in front of people before, um, and when you have insecurities, you just, you kind of like, you're in this like little shell, you know, and, you know, of course, the women's director was encouraging me, and like all the things, it was three months before the event happened, and so I got three months of a lot of motiva motivation, motivation, encouraging from these women to like tell me like, you have a purpose, your testimony is your testimony. It, it doesn't mean that's who you are. It's just what you've been through. And you've got to walk through that journey in order to give someone else hope. And this is your opportunity to give people hope. And so I was like, okay, so I did it. But I remember this one girl, uh, I don't even remember her name. It was like, I don't know, can't even remember her name. But she she gave me a piece of advice and she said, Farah, your, your, your greatest fear is accompanied by your greatest strength. I'm going to let that sink in. <laughs> your, 
your greatest fear is accompanied by your greatest strength. Meaning, because I had a fear of public speaking, that was actually going to be my greatest strength. I didn't believe it until after the event was over and I walked off the stage and I had so many parents come up to me that have kids who are in addiction and they were like, you have no idea how much we needed to hear that. Or somebody, somebody random would say like, fair, do you know you're called to public speaking? And I'm like, I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I don't believe that I'm called to public speaking. But through the years after that, now that I can look back, I can see every everything that I went through had a purpose. Like all the women in the program at the Foundry, I had to learn how to deal with difficult people. I had to learn how to communicate effectively. I had to learn uh, all of those things. Um, I even had to get, walk through my personal um, experience of knowing what freedom feels like. Freedom from pride, guilt, shame, you know, all, anger, bitterness, resentment, you know, all the things I, I learned. I, I had to learn myself and then went through some trials that the, the, the next two years or first year out of recovery, went through a big, 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 big trial with my marriage um, and decided like, okay, I've got to do this. I've got to do this for myself and for my future. And I decided to stay no matter what, how hard it got, right? Because I told you guys that in the very beginning. Um, and anyway, so after all of that, I went to Highlands College. And even there, they there's four pillars at Highlands College that they talk about. Know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Four pillars that we focus on. <laughs> know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, so you can go out and make a difference. And I got to learn what my purpose was in life. And that's exactly the 10 steps I gave you today. We went through that self-discovery journey ourselves. And like my purpose in life is, is to give others hope. <laughs> give others hope. That's my purpose. I didn't go through what I went through for nothing, right? And so I'm saying all that to say when I went to uh, Hope Inspired and I got my job full-time in ministry, I was amazed even there because we started reading the book, Purpose Driven Life Book <laughs> by Rick Warren. And if you haven't read it, I encourage you to go back and read it. But um, we would read that every single day with the students and we would learn or teach them, but I'm learning as I'm teaching. Um, and then realizing like, oh my gosh, I'm teaching. Like it just hit me. I'm teaching a class to people who are broken just like me. And it was just like this light bulb <laughs> that went off like, oh my gosh, I'm walking in my purpose. <laughs> I'm walking in my passion. Hey, Leslie. And it just like all of a sudden hit me all of those years of being in rehab, going through Highlands College, like the Lord like was preparing me for full-time ministry. And I didn't even know it at the time. I didn't even know it. And on top of it, going back to when I first spoke at that event, people were saying all the time, like, Fairy, do you know that you're called to public speaking? And like, and I would not receive it. I just didn't believe it because I never like that I just never thought that that would be my purpose and my calling. And not just public speaking, but teaching. I love to teach people. Um, absolutely loved it. And then my mom and I were in ministry together. She was the director of operations. I was the lead instructor. And then all of a sudden she quit. So, and then I got her job as director of operations and realized that's not my gift. <laughs> it didn't bring me joy. It didn't bring a passion. Like every single morning I would get up and I would get so excited to go and, and teach. Like it was just, it came natural for me. I am an encourager. I love to motivate people and I love to challenge people because I know firsthand what it feels like to receive that encouragement, motivation, and that challenge. So then it just became natural to me. So go back and watch this video, write down those 10 steps on how to find your passion and your purpose. And I promise you, if you do that, you are going to quickly realize like a light bulb, 
what your purpose is in life. So that's my value that I wanted to add to you today. My daughter interrupted for a few times, but that's okay. That's just me being a stay-at-home mom. Should have put that disclaimer in the very beginning, but um, anyway, y'all have the best day ever, and I know I just rambled on and on and on, but it's really not rambling. I want to see you guys succeed. Whoever watches this, doesn't matter if it's just for one person, then I got to add value to, to you today. I got to give you some hope. So, and if you do end up finding your purpose and your passion, go ahead and uh, send me a message on Facebook. I would love to hear what you found out. So, y'all be blessed. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon.